What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Today on this video, um, I have a very special guest, I have a optometry student. She's gonna tell us all about the uh, field of optometry and why she went into it and some tips for you guys. Uh, Talia, thank you for joining us and go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. All right, hello, I'm Talia Tunstall. I am a second year optometry student, halfway through my second year. And um, I graduated from a and University and yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Um, so what made you go into the field of optometry? Is that something that you're always interested in or did you get exposed to it in college or what made you go into it? It's actually like a really funny story because all the way up until my senior, until my senior year, I was trying to become a teacher. Oh, and yeah. I wanted to teach um, physics, chemistry, biology, all the major sciences in high school. And then um, somewhere throughout like my senior year, I was like, let me just try to look into other things. And I went to like a couple of career fairs. I talked to my professors. Um, the main like impact that I had was from my physics teacher who was like, you're really good at physics. <laughs> like you're really good at optics. Like you should look into doing something with this. And literally optometry is, it has a big basis on physics and optics. So I kind of fell into it that way, but. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's one of my favorite classes in college too, is physics. Oh, really? Cool. <laughs> right. um, and a lot of people don't understand uh, the difference between a optometrist and a ophthalmologist. Can you uh -huh. um, please kind of uh, clear the, the mud? <laughs> okay, well, depending on what state that you're practicing in as an optometrist, you have different um, responsibilities and privileges. But um, especially in Texas, if you're an optometrist, you cannot do surgery. You do not do, um, if people have heard of LASIK surgery or refractive eye surgery, it's the same thing. Um, ophthalmologists do that. We are not trained to do surgery. We literally, um, we focus on finding and diagnosing and treating diseases as well as doing refractions so that people can get classes. Ophthalmologists usually just focus on surgeries but um, as an optometrist, you can do post-op and pre-op for the surgeries that the ophthalmologists do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what is the application or the route that you have to take to become a, or to even apply to optometry school? Um, I know there is a admissions test and then the prereqs are kind of similar to medical school. If I would, mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah, no, um, pretty much each school kind of has different classes, like one or two classes that are different that are prereqs to get in. There's also those recommended classes that you don't necessarily have to have them to apply, but they help. Um, you basically just take what is called the OAT, which is the optometry emissions test, similar to the MCAT. Okay. And then um, once you take that and you get the score that you want, then you can go ahead and start applying through this uh, system called OptomCast. Okay. And it's an online application. All you have to do is put in your grades, answer a few questions, um, and get letters of recommendations from, I think, three people, if I remember correctly. And then um, then you go into interviews. Once you do your interviews and you hear back, <laughs> then that's pretty much it. Okay. Well, what's a competitive score for the, uh, the admissions test? I know that most schools look for you to have over 300, but I wouldn't shoot for the bare minimum, especially since a lot more people are starting to apply each year. Um, I would say probably above 310. Overall, like for each section, I would say above 310. Overall, I would say above a 300. Okay. And you are a second year optometry student, is that correct? Yes. Uh, how's it going for you? How's your, your uh, second year going? It is going really well. I actually really like second year because I'm really interested in diseases. And if I was to do a residency, I would want to do an inocular disease. And second year is all about like diagnosing, finding different pathologies, um, do, learning the different skills that we need in order to like be able to see the different things that can go wrong in the back of your eye. Um, all the cool stuff is second year, like all just the basic learning is first year and second year is when you really get hands on and get to learn all the really fun stuff. So I love it. Uh, what is a typical day for you? I know it probably depends on what course you're taking, but do you get up and are you a morning person like to study before or um, and then you come home and then you have classes in the evening? And optometry school, what is a typical day usually like? Okay, well, for first year, we had classes in the morning and then labs in the afternoon. Second year, we had labs in the morning and then classes in the afternoon. So the classes that weren't necessarily mandatory before, you could just like just show up in the afternoon and then go to lab because you have to go to lab. 
Um, but for second year, you're already there. So you kind of just hang out on campus all day. I'm not a morning person at all. So um, I actually like having lab in the morning because you get in and you get to, instead of just sitting down, you can do hands-on things and you get to work with your um, patient and it kind of wakes you up instead of just having to sit there and listen to your professor. So uh, pretty much we're on campus from eight in the morning until around four or five is usually when we end class. And then we have after hours from five until nine. Okay. Can you have a, um, a social life? In the <laughs> yeah. Or is it you're like all in the books and you can't do anything, have, go out and have fun? Um, that's what I get a lot of questions about being a, as a resident. People want to know if you have a social life outside of, you know, mm -hmm. is that possible? No, it's definitely possible. It really depends on the type of person you are and how good you are at prioritizing your time. I know a lot of the people that wait until the last minute to like do assignments and start studying for tests. They're the ones that usually complain about not having time to do anything. But if you prioritize and you do a little bit here and there, you're going to have plenty of time. I've had so much time this semester. This has been like the hardest semester for me. And I literally was able to like go out to eat all the time or like go to the movies. Okay. I finished like so many theories on Netflix, so yeah. it's doable for sure. Okay, and to become an optometrist, you, yeah. need to, you need to have your bachelor's degree and then you do four years mm -hmm. of optometry school, and is there any training after that that most people do? Or Okay, um, you don't have mandatory training, so your fourth year is you're doing um, like externships and things like that, rotations. Um, and then after you graduate, you can do a residency and the different residencies that they have are like VA residencies, um, vision therapy, ocular disease, things like that. Grants. Um, and you don't really, you get a stipend, but it's not like getting paid as an actual career or a job. Um, but a lot of people do find jobs better that way because they're kind of pushed straight into the field that they want to be in. Um, so that's an option, or you can just graduate and go straight into working. Okay. It really depends on what you do, yeah. And speaking about pay, how much can a person out of optometry school expect to make uh, on average? What would you say? Well, I've heard different figures. <laughs> yeah, well, I've heard different figures. I know a couple of my professors actually have like more than $1 million practices. So um, straight out of optometry school, I've heard anywhere from like one hundred to one fifty thousand dollars per year. Um, it really just depends because in optometry, there's so many different avenues you can go. You can go working for a private practice. You can work at a hospital. You can work as an independent contractor. Um, you can work at like J.C. Penney's or um, Target places like that. So it depends on what avenue you go. But I know a lot of people that go straight into private practice they make the higher end of that one fifty. Okay. Awesome. 500,000, yeah. All right. Any other advice you would have for someone who is, who's interested in a field of optometry? What, what advice would you uh, have for them? My best advice would be to shadow. So, um, I literally shadowed as I was doing my application, so I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. Thankfully, I love it. But um, I think that it's really important to shadow, and it's going to give you a better understanding of what you're going to end up doing and if you're actually gonna like it. Um, and also give you ideas of what kind of residencies you wanna do, if that's what you're looking into. So I would say shadow, I think that's the best. And then you have a mentor that you can make out of that and that you can ask questions from. So that would be the best advice. Awesome. Um, and if anyone wants to contact you about applying to optometry school or, or about just um, uh, being an optometrist in general, what, uh, do you have any social media accounts or any way that they can? Yes. Uh, I do. Um, so I have an Instagram, which is Talia, T-A-L-I-A dot T-E-E. -E. And then I also have um, my email address, which is Talia Tunstill. So I already spelled my first name. Tunstill, T-U-N-S-T-I-L-L -L, 95 at gmail.com. Um, either one of those I'm on the most. <laughs> so um, you could uh, you can message me on either one of those. I'm free to answer with any kind of questions. It doesn't even have to be about how to apply or anything like that. It could be about like my experiences and things. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah, well, thank you for uh, joining us today and uh, congrats on all your success. And uh, uh, we'll see you next time. All right, thank you. You're welcome. And everyone else out there, thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, make sure you 
subscribe as every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'll be posting a new video. Uh, you don't want to miss them. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.